and the new Miss Earth Canada 2022 is contestant number 19, Jessica Chankina. Friends, mga ka XL, oh my God, we are all excited because Miss Earth Canada 2022 is with us right now. Friends, please welcome Jessica Shankiro. Yay! Hey, hi, 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 Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Everyone. It is an honor to be here and to speak with you today. Uh, I'm so fortunate to have the opportunity to speak to everyone that's watching, and I hope everyone's having a good day. And I'm so excited for this discussion. Yay! And first and foremost, congratulations. The whole Canada and the Philippines as well is so much excited for your victory. Yay! Woo -woo -woo. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know. I know. We were just talking about how Filipinos are. They love pageants and they're so supportive now to add Filipino Canadians, yeah. even more support supportive. So I'm so grateful to have your support and of course, Filipino Canadians and from all over the world as well. And, and of course, you're, you're half Filipino and half Canadian, that's right? Yeah, no, my dad is half Italian, half British. And oh. my mom is full Filipina. Oh, okay. Okay, and where, where's the your mom from the Philippines? Would you know the province? Yeah, Laguna Las Banos. Laguna, Laguna. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> home of the coconut, the buco pie. Buco pie. Yeah. pie. Oh, well, when was the last time you visited Philippines? The last time I visited Philippines was in 2019 for Miss Asia Pacific International, and I represented Canada. And I was fortunate enough to earn the title of second runner-up. Yay! So, yeah, so we were <laughs> able to, you know, the, the, the top five winners were able to travel around the Philippines. We went to Palawan, Boracay, wow. Cebu. Yeah, it was, of course, Filipinos are so hospitable. And it was just a great experience. Oh, okay. Now, how, how is it like of being raised by a Filipino mom? Being raised by a Filipino mom, oh my goodness, I am just so grateful. Like here in Canada, of course, we're so multicultural. So my, I have friends from all different places in the world and I've met their parents. So I've learned about their culture. But in comparison to, you know, the Filipino culture, being raised by a Filipino mom, I, I feel like I've grown up very reserved. Um, I'm the youngest daughter as well. So I have, you know, all my kuyas and ates watching over me. And um, my mom has really instilled, you know, um, the importance of honoring your family. I think in the Filipino culture, you know, your reputation and the way that you um, show yourself to the world in comparison or reflecting your family is so important. Not to say that, you know, Canadian parents don't have that same kind of um, importance on reputation, but I think that my Filipino mom really watched me growing up maybe in high school when I would you know, talk to boys or to meet friends. She would always make sure that I put my best foot forward. I'm showing, you know, who I am in the best way possible. So I'm just so grateful that I was able to have both Canadian experience, but also Filipino experience. Okay. Would you say she's more strict compared to your friends' uh, moms? Yes, yes. But for the longest time, I wasn't allowed to sleep over. I, I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend until I was 18. Okay. Um, so a lot of the things, even now to this day, she's still like, who are you with? What time are you coming home? And, you know, growing up, I, I struggled with it because, of course, I wanted to have independence. But now that I'm older, I really, really respect that that was coming from a place of love. And that she's mm. just looking out for me. She wants me to be safe. And I'm just grateful to be raised by Filipina. And this, it was so cute. Have you heard what she said? Even she's raised here in Canada, she still uh, calls his brother Kuya Ate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many yeah. are you? How many brothers and sisters do you have? So um, I have one older brother. Okay. He is um, born 1995, so three years older than me. Um, and that that's kind of why I'm a little bit of a tomboy because I have an older <laughs> brother. So all of you know the hand-me-down clothes. Like I just follow him around all the time growing up. 
Um, I was doing sports. I played soccer. So he influenced <laughs> me a lot. Ang gandang tomboy naman ito. Yes. Oh my goodness. I look like this like 1% of the time, but 99% of the time I'll be on the soccer field or I'll be hanging okay. out with my cousins. Yeah, just just super tomboy. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. cannot imagine. <laughs> no, oh my goodness. No, I, I much rather prefer that because um, I like being active and playing sports. And, you know, I think that that's fun for me. And the glam life is more... My mom introduced me to it recently. It's very new to me. So pageant life, I just started in 2018, actually. Okay. So I'm very new to this. Very new, just four years. Yes, mm. yes. So I'm very new, but I, I've learned a lot. And I feel like I've grown a lot during that time. Do you still have time to do your sports now that you're busy with the pageant and preparing for other stuff? Yes. Yeah, so no, actually, growing up, I was in competitive soccer. I actually... Okay. I, I got a scholarship for soccer, but I didn't go through with it, but I had the opportunity to. Uh, but now that I do pageants and modeling, that's my main priority. And then soccer and sports will just be for fun. You know, I have a dog, so we'll go to the park and play on my spare time. Uh, but yeah, really pageants and modeling are my responsibility now, especially as a title holder. So I, I really, you know, take it seriously for me. No. It's good. So Jessica, you uh, you mentioned uh, before uh, when we got to know about your background, you finished and graduated from the University of Western Ontario yes. with a major in anthropology. Can you explain to us? And then it's it's a minor in women's studies. Can you briefly explain what this is, what yeah. you specialize in? So people, I mean, like me, would be aware of what's anthropology. Yes, so anthropology in very simple terms is the study of culture. Okay. So culture can mean language, it can mean uh, customs, clothing, uh, the way that we view the world, food. It's literally everything about humans. So that's why I really love to travel. I love to learn about new cultures. It's very easy to judge what you don't understand, but anthropology allows us to open our minds and to really accept different worldviews and different practices. And then, like you said, um, I'm minor, minor in women's studies. So when, I, when a lot of people hear that word, they think of feminism as just the study of gender equality. But actually, it's the study of uh, classism, um, disabilities, um, societal structures, um, racism, literally everything in society that um you know inequalities that's what women's studies targets so I, i'm very fortunate to have been able to have gone to university and i just graduated this year as well so wow wow, <laughs> wow. double congratulations to you thank jessica you. thank you <laughs> And you really deserve to be Miss Earth Canada because of that. It's really because of those accomplishments, everything. right? That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for clarifying anthropology because every weekend my wife goes to anthropology, but it's a clothing clothing store here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's different. Yes. It's a different anthropology. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay. They're both good, though. Both of them are great. Oh, okay. So for our viewers, anthropology is also a clothing store for women. Also, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Just to clarify. Okay. And so you're planning to take up masters uh, in the future as well? Yes. Yeah, so actually, I kind of um, am going to make a turn. So I realized that I really love doing things like this, interviews, talking to people. So I'm going to master in journalism, broadcast journalism. Wow. So hopefully I can use my skills of culture and women's studies in, and apply that to broadcast journalism. Days we have, we, we're just in time talking to Jessica. Maybe mm -hmm. a year from now, we cannot talk to her anymore. <laughs> she will be, be very busy. busy. She will be very busy. No, I always have time for, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful when people ask me for interviews because, you know, it's an honor to even be able to speak with you. And like you said, you know my Ninang. So there's yeah. a, a, a relationship there. So 
I'm just grateful that we're able to do this. Hey, I have I have a question because I don't have any experience with uh, joining a beauty pageant. You know, yes. <laughs> are you planning to join? Chris? No, no. I can help you train. No, I, I, I cannot. I, I cannot wear uh, skeletos, so six inches, <laughs> eight inches. Yes, six inches. Yeah. <laughs> that what what's the feeling when the the host says and. The Miss Earth Canada is number 17, Jessica oh Tiantino. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Oh my goodness. Well, it's actually very nerve wracking because as an audience member, everything goes by so fast. But when you're on stage, it feels like you're on there for eternity. It feels like forever, especially waiting for, you know, your name to be called. So what I do whenever I'm on stage is I constantly pray just to keep myself grounded and keep myself in the moment. So I'll say like our fathers and Hail Marys actually. And um, are, you hold, are you holding your rosary? <laughs> on stage in my heart. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so when I was called, it's just an instant, um, you know, feeling of gratitude that I was able to um, even be, you know, called for that amongst all the amazing women that I was, um, competing against in Canada, right? And then as soon as I won, I just looked up to my family. I love seeing their faces in the audience. It it makes me genuinely smile and I, I feed off of their energy. So that was the first thing I did was I'm just so grateful, thanking God. And then um, I'm so proud that I was able to do this for my family. But I, I saw your video, you're still poised and looks like a queen. Really. <laughs> See, that's the thing, you have to fake it until you make it. I always do this <laughs> because I am nervous on stage, right? I, I think that you, it's important, you know, to be nervous because it just means that you care and nervous energy can be good. It can be used as fuel, like yeah, adrenaline. Um, your body responds to nerves mm -hmm. the exact way it, it responds to excitement. So, you know, your palms get sweaty, your heart starts beating. So I am nervous on stage, but I don't think you can tell. Well, I'm, I'm happy you said that you can't tell um, because I try to keep my composure. But no, I am. Um, I do get excited or nervous, but I think praying on stage helps me a lot. It keeps me grounded. And um, yeah, I'm just very grateful, like I said. But when, when you were competing, are you confident that um, I'm going to win this contest? I'm going to win this contest. I want to win this. Well, I, it's like I said, like I, I have a close relationship with God. So I think that whatever is meant to be, you know, it, whatever God's plan is, I just trust in that. And whatever is meant for you, it will not pass you. Mm -hmm. So I just like to trust the process. And of course, I like to say, okay, this time I'm going to win. I'm going to win. If, if it's God's plan, if it's in God's plan for me to win, then I will. If not, then it will just be a stepping stone. You know, there's there's been a lot of pageants where, I haven't received the title and it actually benefited me though still because I was able to connect with, let's say IPEN, which is the group that I train with, or it connects me with a nonprofit organization like YPAM that I work with now. So it's just either way, whatever the outcome is, it's still a blessing that comes out of it. Okay. Yeah. So when is the Miss Earth come international? Is, is that right? So Miss Earth International will be? Yes. Yes. When so they haven't announced the host country or the official date right now there's still national um, pageants that are still occurring so my friend is actually competing in miss earth philippines so oh. i know that yeah so i know that it's still occurring right now so we're just waiting for the national titles first and then the international will be announced later what, on in the year what's her name you can do a shout out yeah so shout out <laughs> my friend jasmine pagio we were actually both trained with IPEN, which, uh, oh. in, yeah, my he um, he was my national director before, um, but he's the president, uh, Tito Edgar Sulit. He trained me in Jasmine uh, growing up and, I mean, in 2018. And yeah, I'm just, I'm wishing her all the best. Uh, I think there's a, a stigma with pageant girls or pageant sisters that there's some kind of competition, but mm. I've actually found a lot of my friendships and genuine connections to to be from the pageant world so we're very supportive and um you know because we know how scary it can be to put ourselves mm -hmm. in that position you have to be a certain type of person to put yourself out there and you mm -hmm. know have people literally judge you on how you look and how you talk 
So I'm just sending a lot of positive vibes and, and love her way. Okay. You're, you're, you said you're always on toes. You're always prepared. You're, you're yeah. just like, uh, uh, what's this voice? Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. a Girl Scout. I was a Girl Scout, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Girl Scouts. Yeah, they're, they're always ready. But um, I try to be as much. You can never be fully prepared. But like I said, if it's meant to be, then it won't what's meant for you will not miss you so so they these let's check uh jessica she's if she's really prepared you have a, you have um you have days to prepare something for you okay so we have a quick portion here just for fun so i'll be giving you two words okay we'll call this portion as what would you choose okay two items uh and then quickly just pick one Okay. One second. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Just a few seconds. Oh I'll give God. you items, and then it may describe yourself or your preference, and all you have to do is to choose one quickly. Okay. This is just so funny because I'm a Gemini, so I, I have very <laughs> difficult with making decisions. I'm always like, uh, okay. but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm a Gemini too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's almost happy, almost happy Gemini birthday. Too. Yeah. <laughs> It's coming up, yeah. Yeah, soon. Me, I. So, when is your birthday? June four. Oh my, mine's June twelve. <laughs> okay. So Chris is just a few days older than you. Yeah, just eight days just older. A few days older. <laughs> eight days and uh, fifty years. <laughs> Game. All right. Very quickly, choose. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, from Jessica, what? Which would you choose? Adobo or poutine? Adobo. <laughs> Cat <laughs> or dog? Dog. Swimsuit or gown competition? Swimsuit. Oh. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Bubble tea or bubble bath? <laughs> bubble tea. <laughs> Snow or rain? Rain. <laughs> Tim Hortons or Starbucks? Tim Hortons, Canadian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you a night person or a day person? Day person. Okay, sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Oh, you're a morning person. Okay, yes, so yes. lechon, lechon manok or lechon baboy? <laughs> um, manok. Ah. No, no. Healthy, it seems like she's not eating meat, <laughs> pork meat. <laughs> she's too sexy for that. <laughs> As a beauty queen, would you prefer going by your day with makeup or no makeup? No makeup. Oh, okay. Would you rather go to the beach or the forest? The beach. Oh, and the last one. Do you see yourself as a religious person or a spiritual person? Religious. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I have, I have, I have addition. Jollibee or McDo? Oh, McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> we just opened. Actually, we just opened Jollibee in the oh, area. Okay. Not that I don't love Jollibee, but I just think if I'm going to go for like a Filipino food, I'd rather have like home cooked or restaurant okay. than fast food. Oh. You know. Oh, yeah. Talking about food, do you know how to? Cook, cook any Filipino food? I not. I don't think Filipino food, but I, I do love to cook. But in my family, we eat very healthy, so we usually have like salad bowls or like quinoa or like stir fried vegetables. But I do want to learn how to do um, to cook Filipino dishes. That's how about your mom? Mind. Your mom is cooking. Uh, does she, does she cook food? or no? Yes, yeah, she does. She does cook. Okay. Um, but yeah, but more like healthy. Healthy, you food. know. Healthy food, yeah. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Recently, I've been eating sinigang because I have a bit of a cold. Wow. So it's, it's been good. The soup, I love sinigang, yeah. Hey, is your mom also a beauty title holder? No, she wasn't. Uh, she, she was not. Um, she actually was a tomboy growing up. So I know she was like, yeah, she was like, in <laughs> the Ang arm. tomboy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, <my>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she was like in the army, like growing up. She was trained. Um, but she's always, well, I think she's always wanted to be in pageants. So I think that's why she put me in pageants to vicariously live through me. Um, but she's, she's so supportive 
honestly, every single photo shoot, every event, she's always there with me and my nana and my grandmas um, as well. So if you see me, you see my mom all the time. Oh, okay. yeah. mom. And her, yeah. I think your your diction is good when you say nana, kuya, ta, ate. It's correct, no? Uh, yes. What other Filipino words that you know? Words. Um. Well, okay. I really love the word uh, maarte. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny that there's no English translation to it. But I, I do think it's interesting because I see it sort of like the word diva, uh -huh. right? But I want to challenge the way that we view maarte or diva because it usually, it, it means it's just a woman that knows what she wants, right? <laughs> she knows exactly what she wants. She's a diva. She's a maarte. And there's no male equivalent, right? Uh -huh. if, if a man knows what he wants, it's not bad. He's just a boss or he, he's just assertive. But if a woman knows what she wants, she's my artist, she's a diva. So I don't think that's true. I think that we should, you know, break these stigmas, right? But I think it's such a funny word because yeah. how do you describe my art to English speakers? Like, oh. Juicy sometimes. Juicy maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 But my art is really unique for yeah. Filipinos. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, right. It's ma so arte. funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah Maarte. But you really like the word maarte. I think it's funny. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. Actually, it's cute and it's funny. It's yeah. so cute. Yeah, just yeah. because you can't, you, can't, you can't explain it. There's no literal translation, right? Yeah. So, maarte. It's so interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you have a, a video key at home. Karaoke. Carry yes. It's so funny that you say that because I actually went last night to karaoke uh, um, <laughs> yeah my cousin he's from england and um he stayed here for two years in canada okay. on a, a visitor visa and it just expired so he's leaving today so oh. his send-off party was a karaoke party and we all went last night okay okay yeah. so Have jessica will be sing? singing singing for us <laughs> <laughs> no. i'm more of a dancer but oh, okay but uh. i can I sing in the shower. That's that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did, have you sung any you know, Filipino song that you're familiar yeah. with? Or? Have you tried it? Yes. Yeah, so I actually love uh, Baki Ba. Oh. Desa. Yeah. I love that song. That's my go-to. Or actually. Sample okay. one line, one line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, the viewers' ears are gonna hurt. Like, <laughs> They're used to it. <laughs> yeah. Because of our uh, voices. Oh, no, no, no they, they might take back the crown. <laughs> <laughs> They'll um, give you then, another crown, the singing crown. <laughs> uh, singing crown. Yeah, and actually, um, a lot of people don't know, but my aunt is Rosal Nava. So oh, wow. Any, yeah, so any song by her, I, I love her. I'm a I'm such a big fan. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. okay. You're really a family of uh, famous personalities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. She's so okay. nice. She's very talented. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So since speaking Tagalog, I mean, growing up, you, you understand Tagalog, but rarely do you speak the language, right? Yes, yes. I had to understand because I wanted to know what my mom and my nana were saying to each other. <laughs> Um, they, can, they, they cannot sell you. They cannot, yeah. They, <laughs> they can't cheese me because I'll understand what they're saying. Because the cheese me, yeah. The cheese um, And also, my nana would watch like GMA and those shows. So I would listen to that growing up. But speaking is something that I need to work on. Um, okay. Maybe Tagalish. Uh, I'll learn how to speak Tagalish first and then work my way there. Okay. So today is your lucky day. Yeah, Jessica, because Chris has a Tagalog challenge for you, a tongue twister challenge. Yeah, if you'd like to learn it, <laughs> yeah, you, you should say, uh, Butike, Butika, Bituka, Butike, Bituka, Butika, Butike, oh Bituka, Butika, so Butike, difficult. Butika, Bituka. <laughs> so butike is a yeah, little large. at least five times. Butika is okay. a stomach, and then the Butika is the uh, drugstore or pharmacy. So, Butike, Bituka, butike. Butika. Betuka, botica. Bot botica. Bot botica. Yeah. Okay. Butiki, betuka, botica. Yeah. Yeah. Betuki, betu, betuka, 
Butuka. <laughs> Did I say it right? Butika. Bazooka. Butika. <laughs> Butiki. Butika. Okay. Butika. Butiki. Butika. Butika. Well. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, nice. 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 <laughs> One more, one more, one more. One uh, this more. is a fun game for among all kids in the Philippines. We say Pasco, Pasco is Christmas, and then Paxio. You know Paxio? Paxio? It's a food. It's a yeah, food, it's yeah. a food. Okay, Paxio. Okay. Pasco, Paxio. Pasco, Paxio, Pasco, Paxio, Pasco, Paxio. Pasco, Paxio, Pasco, Paxio, Pasco, Paxio. Pasco, Paxio. Yeah. When I say Pasco, you will say Paxio. When I say Paxio, you will say Pasco. Okay. okay. Game ready. Pasco. Paxio. Paxio. Paxo. <laughs> Pasco. 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 What is what is Paxo? <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> we'll give you an A. It's yeah, the tongue twisters are even difficult in English, let alone Tagalog. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't worry, even even us are just faking it. <laughs> it's also difficult among us. It is. Yeah. And, I, okay. That, that was now, fun. Yeah, and, and um, I've heard your advocacy is about mental health. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, why is that so? Yeah. So um, initially, when I first joined pageants, they, you know, when I was being trained, someone told me make sure that your advocacy is something that's close to your heart because you're going to be speaking for this and you're going to be doing a lot of work for that. So when I thought about a cause that I wanted to make a difference, I thought about mental health because I actually lost a loved one to suicide. Um, oh. My cousin was very, very young. He was 12 years old. So um, this happened when I was 18 years old. So at the time, I didn't even realize the importance of mental health as a topic of discussion, especially among the younger generation. Uh, it's a very new discussion that, you know, our society is having about mental health. So um, I, I think it's so important. Um, it's, it's weird to me that we go for checkups, physical checkups to the doctor, but we rarely check up on our mental health. It's very strange. So it's important to be healthy, mind, body, and soul. They all connect. Um, and I, I'd like to be an advocate for the younger generation. And, you know, it, it's, it doesn't always have to be a dark and grim conversation. Uh, mental health can be something fun. It can be something that connects people. And I think community is the biggest thing for me. You know, talking to your loved ones, talking to friends that you trust, and just sharing your um your concerns because then you realize that you're not alone and that a lot of people actually do share similar concerns as you. So that's what I like to advocate for. I'm currently the ambassador of mental health for the Youth and Parents Association of Markham. So that's the nonprofit organization in the city that I live in. And I'm so fortunate enough to, you know, raise awareness for this and also host events. So currently, if you visit my page, we're actually hosting a 100 days walk slash run to raise awareness for mental health. So a lot of people don't realize that, you know, your physical health affects your mental health as well as your mental health affects your physical health. So going outside um, in nature, especially as Miss Earth, I've really realized going outside in nature and, and going on hikes, it actually helps your mental health as well because it grounds you, it makes you feel like you're not alone. So yeah, if, if you would like to join in this, um, this challenge, 100 day challenge, you can visit my page and you know, we would be so grateful to have more participants because it strengthens our community. community. Okay, is this open to anyone in Canada or worldwide, globally? Yes, so, so actually we're doing this on the app Strava. So you don't have to be present. You just download the app. It tracks your kilometers of how much you walk or run. And actually the winners, um, there's a raffle. So the winners can win Fitbits or other um, prizes. So it's, it's really fun to you know, get involved in events that push you to be more active mentally and physically. Enjoy. Yes, yes, All exactly. Right. All the instructions are there. And also I found last year, some people that weren't 
walkers or runners initially, after they challenge themselves, they continue to keep that in, your, in their lifestyle actually. And they, they were so used to walking and running every day that mm -hmm. they continued even after the challenge every day or every evening, um, they would go for a walk. So I think it's important to, you know, especially because COVID, we've been inside and yeah. isolated um, and we haven't really had that, that physical activity in our lives for so long. So it's good to incorporate that in our everyday lives now. Nice. Yeah. nice. So we will ask our all our um, friends and uh, what's the subscribers to support your advocacy about mental yes, health. Yes, thank you so much. I really oh, appreciate that. Oh, of course, of course. We, we will ask that. Okay, Dave, you have some qu more questions? So looking forward, while waiting for the Miss Earth International competition, any other competitions that you are aiming to join in aside from Miss Earth? Yes, yes. Well, of course, right now Miss Earth is my priority, and I I would um, I'm aiming for the Miss Earth International crown. However, I'm currently 23, turning 24. Okay. And I know um, the cutoff age to compete is 28. So for my next couple of years, I would like to compete in Miss Universe Canada. Yay. It's always been a dream of mine. Yes, um, the largest pageant. So before I'm 28. I 100% will compete in Miss Universe. But like I said, right now, um, you know, my, my priority is Miss Earth International. Um, I've actually, in 2018, I was Miss Earth Ontario. And then I went on to nationals and I placed first runner up for Miss Earth Canada in 2017. So it's funny that, you know, I kind of made a full circle and now I'm Miss Earth Canada and I'm okay. able to represent Canada. And, I would really, of course, I'm aiming for the international crown. Yeah. So we'll help you prepare for that, Jessica, because we have some questions <laughs> that were asked during the Miss Universe pageants of the past. These are oh. famous questions so, already. These are okay. famous questions that were asked during the Miss Universe. So I'll choose some questions here. Maybe, again, spontaneously you can answer these questions. So this was asked... and let's check who has a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> so this was asked back in 1996. Okay? And it was asked uh, she wasn't born yet. She was you weren't <laughs> born yet. <laughs> it was asked uh, to Miss Venezuela back in 1996. So the question is what do you think men can learn from women? I think that there are a lot of qualities that both men and women can learn from each other. The men in my life have taught me, you know, to be strong and to go for what I want. But I think men can learn how to be intuitive and touch with their emotions. I think that women are very nurturing instinctually and we care for those around us. And I think that this is something that men can learn from women as well. They can really learn how to be aware of their surroundings, be aware of others. And it's okay not to be okay. And you can, you know, you don't have to be a strong man all the time. You can show emotions because that is what makes you strong is showing emotions and showing love for others. Oh, <laughs> I've heard and that. The win and the winner is. <laughs> <laughs> Good Some answer. More days, oh. more. Oh, one more. Okay. <laughs> this one is moving forward. We uh, This is from the 1994 Miss Universe pageant in Manila. Oh, so uh, before I was born from, as well. <laughs> yeah, from Sushmita Sen from India. So actually, we met Sushmita Sen in 1994. Yeah, yeah both of us. <laughs> the, the place where we worked, we invited the Miss Universe contestant. So I met Sushmita Sen in person during the competition. She hasn't won yet. So on the eve of the pageant, she was asked, okay, the question is, what for you is the essence of being a woman? I think the essence of being a woman is subjective because women, there's not one definition. All those strong women that I know in my life are very multifaceted. We can do a lot of things like we can be stay-at-home moms, but we can also be entrepreneurs and business women. So I think it's important to stay true to you and who you are and make sure that you remember that 
you are not one thing, that you can be anything you want to be if you put your mind to it. And that is the essence of being a woman. <laughs> I, can, I, I can already see the crowd cheering yeah. on the Filipinos. <laughs> you, have, you have two solid fans here. <laughs> yeah, every time counts. <laughs> you want yeah. one more? One more? Or yeah. Last. Okay, the last one. Okay, <laughs> this is kind of light. It's a very light question. Okay, what makes you blush? What makes me blush? I think what makes me blush is speaking to people like you, genuine people who I share genuine connections with. I think that I love connecting with others, and I I'm an empath. So I feed off of other people's energies. And when I feel that there is love there, that's what makes me blush. And that's what makes my heart smile. Oh, wow. that's so I'm, sweet. I'm, yeah, I'm blush too. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would say advanced congratulations, both for winning the Miss Earth uh, International and... <laughs> And soon, Miss Universe. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. I, I'm speaking it into existence, and like I said, God willing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just, so, just bring your rosary always. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations to you again for winning those pageants for being an extraordinary person. And I congratulations think. to your mom for having a a good child like you. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Yes, I like. I'm so grateful. Like I was saying, it takes a village really to compete to raise in pageants. A child. Yeah, yeah, to raise a child and to compete in pageants as well. Yes. Like right now, everyone is just seeing me with my sash, but you don't see all the people behind the scenes that have helped me get to yeah. where I am. And um, so I would like to just give a shout out to um, IPEN, um, to my uh, catwalk coach Manong. And then my mom, my nanai, my grandma, my ninang. I wouldn't be here without them. Um, and my nanai always tells me that um, you, I think it's a Filipino saying, I'm not sure how to say it in Tagalog, but it, mm -hmm. in English, it's um, you have to look back from where you came from or else you won't know where your destination is. You won't arrive at your destination. So I'm just so grateful for all the people that have helped me get here. And I'm grateful to be able to talk to you two and to connect with you today. You call your mom Nanai? No, okay, so mom. I didn't explain this, but Lola. My, my Lola, the, the Lola. She, the she likes us. She likes us to call her Nanai because it, yeah. it makes her feel, you know, young. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's she's right. not a Lola, she's a Nanai, yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> okay. Right. So this Yes, so again, uh for our viewers, we'd like to invite you to join Jessica's uh, advocacy. We'll be yeah, posting yeah. it here. And then watch for the Miss Earth International, where Jessica will be joining. We'll be cheering for you, Jessica, of course. You're so special to us as one of our guests, as our fellow Canadian, our fellow Filipina. Thank you so much. Thank you for being part of this show. We're so happy to meet you. And hopefully, one of these days, we'll get to meet you in person when I visit yes. Toronto. <laughs> if you're yeah. ever in Toronto, please do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to see sure. you around. Sure, yeah. no problem. Yeah, yeah and sure. thank you so much again for having me. I'm very proud to be half Filipina, and I'm very honored to have the support of Filipino Canadians and Filipinos from all over the world. So thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Well, what is your message to the Filipinos watching you right now? Well, my message is... Hello, and I, I, I would really appreciate, you know, all of your support. I know that pageants are a big deal in the Philippines. It's not so much in Canada. So I would really, really appreciate um, all the support. And like I said, I'm so proud to be a, a part of the Filipino culture. So I'm, um, I'm just so grateful to, you know, to have your support and to be in the culture as well. How about, how about to the Canadians? Of course, you're representing Canada. To Canadians, yes. Yeah, so one of the th great things about being Canadian is that we're so multicultural and you could be, you can come from anywhere in the world and still be proud to be Canadian. Um, you don't have to pick one. You can be Filipino Canadian, right? Or Indian Canadian. So to my Canadians, I will represent our country with honor and with pride. And I would um, love to have your support as well. All right. 
Wow, again, thank you so much. And shout out to your aunt, oh, Belinda. Yes, That's right. My ninang, yes, my ninang your Belinda. Ninang Belinda. She is supporting me all the way from Nunavut. She is always supporting me. Um, she actually came to the Philippines with me when I competed in Miss Asia Pacific International. Um, so she's also there with me all the time. I'm telling you, I have a team, a very strong, powerful woman with me, and um, I wouldn't be here without them. So I'm so grateful for my ninang and everyone. Uh, okay. now, now you have a lot. You have thousands yeah. supporting you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so grateful. Okay. Right. Jessica, thank you so much for grazing over here at the XL Show. Um, and to, to all our friends, please like, subscribe to the XL Show. We have a very special guest right now. And again, Jessica Shankino, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and like I, I said, you can follow, you know, the YPAM journey if you're interested. And also my social media on Instagram. It's just Miss Jessica Victoria and on Facebook as well. So thank you so much again for having me. And I, I hope you have wonderful days. Uh, the weather is looking nicer outside. So hopefully we get more sun, you know, in Canada because it can get cold here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much again. All okay. right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye -bye. <laughs>